What is up everybody, welcome back to KTL. My name is Zach and in today's video we're answering the question of how to zip a folder in Python. So I have this folder right here that is basically this current working directory of uh, this Python script that we're gonna write. And essentially we're gonna go ahead and zip this whole folder. Now I threw in another subfolder within this folder so we can talk about, you know, if you have a whole folder with subfolders, what do you need to do to go ahead and zip everything and don't miss the subfolders. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. All right, so to zip this whole folder up, we're going to need two basically um, Python built-in packages that we're going to use. So go ahead and import those. It's going to be import OS as well as import. And then there's a several different methods that I found that you can zip folders. Um, in today's example, we're going to use the zip file uh, package. So these are the two different packages that we're going to need. Now let's go ahead and start using them. All right. So with our packages imported, let's go ahead and start using them. Again, if, you have, if you're not using a virtual environment and you're kind of interested about it, I highly recommend you go set one up. I'm using this for all pretty much my YouTube videos, but I highly recommend it because it just helps with so many things um, as you're going throughout a project. Uh, in this case though, um, the packages that we're using are built in to Python and come with Python. So we don't necessarily need a virtual environment, quote unquote, but I will say that it's always, I think it's always important that you use one um, just because when you're, if you're trying to cross different projects, you know, you can cause issues if you don't have, if you're not using a virtual environment for each one. Um, that being said, if we go ahead and dive into this, I'm going to create a zip file. We're going to name it um, zip file, oops, zip file name, we'll say is equal to ztest.zip, okay? Now, with that, that's just what we're going to name it, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use zip file. Now, what zip file does and what it's really good for is to be able to grab and pick and choose the files that you want and bring them into a zip file and and to, you know, create your zip file that way. Now, there's also the way to essentially uh, create, you know, a whole, you know, uh, zip a whole directory, which we're going to talk about today by just doing that by itself using another package. But I'm going to show you with zip file how you can not only select specific files that you want, but also do it with the whole directory, right? So an example of just doing specific files, as you can see, if I hit LS here, um, you'll see all the different files I have in this folder, right? I can also bring up my finder window and you'll also see that I have all these different files here. So I have file one and file two. Let's create a zip folder with just that. So to zip those specific files, because that's what zip zip, uh, zip file is really good for, hence probably the name. Uh, we're gonna use a context manager and we're gonna say, say with zip file dot zip, oops, zip file. And this is now going to basically open up a, a uh, our zip file for us to start writing into. And we're gonna say zip file name, all right? And that's just basically the, the uh, the, you know, the path of where, where, where we want to store our zip file, okay? And now I'm going to open up, and the first phase of this, I'm just going to put in a W, because we're going to write to it, right? And I'm going to say as zip stream, and then right here, we can just say zip stream dot write, and just like this, we just pass it the path to the file name um, that we want to write, and it'll just write it out for us. So, for example, if I know that in my current directory, I want to say, write my current directory, I want to say file1.txt, that'll write it, and we'll say file2.txt, okay? So if I go ahead and run this, hopefully I shouldn't get any errors, and then at the end, we'll see a z.test.zip file has been created. So we go ahead, and we're gonna go ahead and run this, and there's no errors, so we'll check our finder window. We see that there is a z test in there. So if I extract this out, you'll see that right here, now now we have file one and file two are now in there. I can also verify that via the command line because I can do ls and I can see that I had my zip file. I have ztest and I can say ls ztest. And just like that, we see that file one and file two are in there. So you can see how zip file basically allows you to pick and choose the files that we want. So how do we take this um, idea of, of grabbing all the different files and zip up a whole directory? So let's talk about that right now. All right, so we've zipped up those specific files. Again, like I mentioned, let's talk about zipping up the whole directory. If I do something like zip stream dot write, because I mean, if you do dot zip stream, if you have IntelliSense um, with your you know ID that you're using, this will show you all the different things that you can do with, um, with the zip file class, right? Um, and from all this, like oftentimes what is is used is this um, this write function, and that's what we just use, right? So if I go ahead, so I did that for files. If I go ahead and I do this for, let's say, a directory, what happens? Well, I go ahead and run this. We see that I didn't get any errors, and it looks like I got a zip file. But if you go ahead and extract it, what you'll see is we get a notification saying that the archive z.test is empty, meaning it didn't pull in any of the files, right? So this is where our OS import comes into handy. So what we're going to essentially do is 
We're gonna head and rather than do this here, so we'll, this, we'll just say right here, this leaves an empty zip holder. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, four uh, root dirs and files in os.walk. And we're gonna say the current directory. So what this will do is it'll walk through the directory and, and it'll go through all the sub file. And the reason we're using this is because essentially it's a directory tree generator. It's gonna go through each directory in the directory and from the top all the way to the bottom. And it's gonna find all of your files for you that you could write to your folder, right? Or write to your zip folder. So this is what we're going to use to essentially write all of the contents into our zip folder or grab all the contents in their, in their file pass and then put that into our zip file to create our zip file for this specific folder right or for a given folder right you could replace this with a known folder um, that you want to have so maybe that's a sibling folder or maybe that's you know folder up and whatever different place right in your on, on your system so what this will do is we can now say so for file so i'll say cur file in files let's print all these out right and show you what this gives us right so if i go ahead and i run this you'll see that this should print out um, all the files that are within our directory. Now, what's interesting to note is that if we pull this up, we have a zip a z -test zip file here and it's, and it's empty. Well, the reason being is because, um, we'll delete that real quick. The reason being is that when you do this, this this contact manager, what it's going to do is this is opening up a kind of like a, a file pointer to our zip folder that we're creating. And then because it's using the width, you know, width, which is a common thing used with files, if you don't have the width, you have to specifically tell when this closes, right? If you're using everything within the width, after it exits this width, width value down here, let me move this down here so y'all can see. After it comes back to basically this line here where it would be uh, like lined up with that width, it essentially closes the um, that file and, and creates it. So that's why, at, that's why at the end, if we do ls, we end up with, well, I just deleted it. We end up with our z ztest.zip file. It's because it gets created, but there, we never wrote anything to it so it's empty so that's important to note as we're going through this um so this will always create and then by the time it exits it'll close it so if we don't add anything to it by the end every time i run this if i rerun this again you'll see that um and i do an ls you'll see that z.test is is there so now I, I can do you know um i'll just go in here and we can just remove it and so just like that that's removed so now essentially if we're going to write to this what we need to do is we need to say um we need to get the path right because you'll notice that when i do curve file it's just going to print out the name of the file but what happens if the name of the file is in like um let's see if we can find it here like this test.md well this test.md really is actually in this folder so if i try to write that to it we're going to get an error and i can show that by simply saying zip underscore stream dot write and if we do this one and we just say just the just the current file name right as is we should end up with an error so if i run this and we see, oh, file not, fair, file not found, no such file directory, test.md. And it's because we got the file, but we're actually in a directory. So how do we solve this? Well, one method would be to go, um, we get the complete file path for each file, right? So complete file path is equal to os.path.abspath, which will give us our absolute path. And then we can say os.path and we want to join, oops, path.join. And we want to join this root and the cur file. So what that'll do is if we now print this guy out, so that's our cur file, we'll put these, let's do this. We'll put this in that, put this in an F string and we'll do something like this. And then we'll copy this and we'll come down here and say the complete path. So that way we can see when we, when we run it, what it'll print out. Now again, our thing over here got created. So let's go ahead and let's delete it. Um, and now if we go ahead and rerun this, we should shouldn't get that error anymore, right? Oh, and it looks like, oh, I, it's because I, we got it again, but that's also because I didn't put it in there. So now I'm just going to do this command rm dash. So if I do, let's, uh, let's do this really quick. Control C. If I do ls. We see that z test is still there. So if you do the rm command, I, I made a video. I don't know. There it is. I made a video where I say how to delete stuff. Um, again, use this at your own risk because if you do this wrong, you could wipe your system. But essentially do rm dash rf. And then this one means remove and force like, um, 
recursive and forced. And then I can say uh, Z test. Now what this will do is if I'm just doing it to a specific file, it'll just delete that. And you shouldn't have to worry, but if you do like other commands, like different, I'm not even gonna say them because I don't want you to get, you know, jack up your system. You could wipe your whole computer essentially if you do it wrong. So um, I'm gonna leave that caveat there, but and I'm gonna add something like this and reset. And um, I can say how to zip or Python there we go. and Python how to zip a folder. So, but this is this command right here, this set of commands string together with this and is being do this and then reset the terminal and then and then run the Python script. So meaning it should remove this, reset my terminal and then run the script. So that way I don't have to keep going back and forth between file explorer to remove it. Um, so just like that, we go through and we see, hey, we didn't get any errors this time, right? But we see that cur file is equal to test.md. Cur file path is this whole long path. And then we should now have another zip file. So if I come here and I expand this out, you see that, well, now this created a path called, or when I expand it out, it has a folder named users. Why does it have users? So I go in, wait, this has got my whole directory tree of my whole path of the, of this whole directory, right? And we don't necessarily want that. Um, and look, it even had another zip file in there because I think I had one in there before. So um, let's actually see what that does. Oh yeah, that's, and there's gonna be nothing in there. So. Um, so again, when you when you go to do a current file that you're in, you're doing this stuff that you're in, it may grab this file. So we have to we have to add stuff to remove that as well. Um, so if we jump into this, what you'll see is we need to do a couple things. First, we need to say, hey, if your name, if your if the cur file name, if the cur file name is equal to or is not equal to, and I need to do an if statement, if cur file is not equal to, and then we say the zip file name, then do all this. Meaning we don't want to accidentally zip up a zip that we're trying to, of a folder that we're trying to zip in the starting of a, like it just gets weird, right? Um, at the same time, we don't want the complete path because if we do, we end up with this weird, we get the whole thing, right? We get the whole path that it's in. If you do the complete path, depending on how you structure your, your stuff on your system, you could end up with the whole thing. So we don't really want that. So let's go ahead and remove those. I'm gonna delete both of these. Um, and we'll say, let's try this again, right? So let's go ahead and try and get the relative path, meaning the relative path to the folder that we want to do. So like if if a like cur file, like if a file, let's pull this up, it'd be easier. So if I want to zip up this whole files folder, I can essentially say the relative path for file underscore one dot txt is going to be dot slash file underscore one dot txt, right? Whereas the relative path for test.md is going to be um, dot slash test zip slash test.md, right? So again, I'll show you what that looks like. So we go ahead and we can say we want to get the relative path. So we'll do zip rel path is equal to os dot path dot rel path. And then we're going to give it the path to our string. So we're gonna say this is um, our complete file path. Well, we can actually just do os.path.join like that we did right here, root and cur file. And then we wanna tell it where it's going to be relative to, right? And it's going to be relative to the directory that we're in. So in our case, we could just say dot dot slash. Um, another way that you could do this would just be um, just, just to verify this too, is you could do something like os.path, and then we wanna say dot dir name of, and then the path that, we, that we're looking for, right? So again, I could make this better code, and I can come up here and say um, target zip folder is equal to dot slash, and then we can take this, and we can put this down here, and that way we don't have, we're using variables and not, you know, magic numbers or magic um, character, or magic inputs where it's basically just you assign it and then if we need to update this we don't have to go and change it in five different spots right so if we get that now we can say the rail path is equal to this so and then we'll put the rail path here because that's what we want to actually write so i come down here let's make sure everything's clear that it's all cleared and let's run this again. So we see that here is for testmd, there is the current file is testmd, that would be that. The complete file path is this big old long path. And then our zip rail path is going to be equal to test zip or dot slash test zip. It's just hidden because it doesn't, it's in that current folder, um, slash testmd. Whereas you can see like for this commands words, which again, the difference command words right there, you can see is um, that's the current file, that's its complete path. And then its relative path is just in that file or in that folder that we're zipping up, right? So now if we go back and look at our test zip, 
you should see that I get a Z test because um, that is the name of the zip folder. And we look in this guy and now there is our exact folder that we were just zipping up. And again, now you'll see that we don't have that, you know, dot Z test dot zip that was hanging out over here. We have now success successfully <coughs> excuse me successfully wow we've successfully um zipped up this folder and just like that you can use z test to simply select specific um files that you want to zip or if you want to zip a whole up a whole folder you can use os.walk and basically walk through the um the directory grab each of the files grab the relative pass to that folder that you're trying to do it and you can zip it all up so now if I just wanted to zip up, um, let's look at this. If I wanted to zip up just, let's remove this, load to trash. And if I want to zip up z uh, test.zip, it should just be have that one file. We can say dot slash from our current file or from, from our current file, because that's where we're at in the script. Uh, we can say, what is it again? Test zip. So if we want to zip up this folder, now if I go ahead and run this, you should see that it only had one file in it. And if we go back ahead and look and we do, when it extracts this, we'll get a test zip two. And that's because I already had a test zip there. So, you know, with Mac, they'll automatically rename it. And just like that, we have again, successfully zipped up our current folder. Again, this one only had one file. So that is how you can zip a folder. Now let's talk about compression because what we did here is we didn't necessarily compress it. We just zipped it all together and didn't necessarily write use a compression algorithm to use it. So it's gonna be really quick. I'll show you the one thing you need to change to this to use compression. All right, so up until this point, we basically created, have been creating zip files, but we haven't been using a compression algorithm. And that's because default, um, the zip file just kind of will put everything together and, and zip it all up. And so I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna show you kind of what it is and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna create a file and we'll sh compare the two, right? Of a compression or one without compression, one with compression. So, so I'm gonna say not compressed, okay? And we're gonna run, we're just gonna rerun basically what we're gonna, we're just changing the, the name of the zip file, okay? So I go ahead, we run this, we see that just like that, Z not compressed. Now I'm gonna say Z, uh, Z test compressed. And then what we're gonna do is the only changes you have to make is you go up into the zip file and then you make another comma. And then this tells you, this tells you essentially the compression that you want to use, right? The next you know, input is a compression. By default, it just is zero. And what zero is, is simply this zip, um, zip file dot zip stored. That is the default, that is the default vari variable to zero. But if we, if we want to compress this, now you can do stuff with like gzip um, and other compression stuff, but we're gonna use this zip inflate or deflate it. So now if I go ahead and rerun it, that's the only change I made other than changing the file name, but I, to actually create the compression, I just added this and I go ahead and rerun this and it should be all done. We go back here and we look. Oh, I didn't actually save it. Here we go. Z compressed, go ahead and rerun. Oh, it was just underneath and that's why I didn't see it. There it is. Okay, so we have these two files, right? So they're not compressed. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the information, the properties of this, this, this file. So we can see that on my computer, this is showing that this is basically 4.4 .4 megabytes, right? If I go ahead and I do the compressed one, we'll see that this is 2.8 megabytes. So it basically almost reduces in half, right? When we did the, when we did that type of compression. So that is using the compression algorithm. And again, the only thing that you had to do was just add this Z, uh, this zip underscore deflated after you do the right. So I hope that you found this tutorial interesting and helpful. This is how you can specifically grab um, individual files and create zip file, uh, zip, create a zip folder with those. Or, and like our case, we went through and and we walked through a whole directory, grabbed all of the files, and as long as they weren't our zip file that we're creating, right? And uh, essentially created our zip file out of that whole directory. So that's how you zip a folder, in, or that's one of the ways how you zip a folder in Python. So if you have any questions about this, leave this in the comments below. And until next time, keep on programming.